So today you're joining me on a routine trimming job near the artist's town of Kirkcubrae. Join me as I trim just under 50 cows, teach a guy how to use a knife for the very first time and take a walk around this great dairy farm in southwest Scotland. And as always, if you like this kind of content, smash the subscribe button guys and if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up! So I'm here at a fairly large scale dairy for Scotland, about 450 cows milking here and we're actually trimming them through the parlour here like this, which isn't the best but it does work. We trim about 50 in 3 hours here, mostly because the feet are really good now though. So let's crack on and get them done. This is sawdust. It's the beep down and makes it less slippy. You see, you don't always have to use a knife. As long as you get the job done perfectly, what's it matter what you do? Jesus, thirsty they work. So Joseph's attending a foot trimming course in the coming weeks and they asked me if I could just give him the once over and let him use a knife on a few cows just so that he can get to grips with the knife and really really get the most out of the foot trimming course that he possibly can. Picking a knife up for the first time is quite daunting and it's actually a skill that takes quite a long time to nail properly. So I actually arrive at this farm at around quarter past eight or half past eight with the aim to start trimming by quarter to nine. We usually trim between 40 cows and 50 cows and I need to be out of that area by 12 o'clock at the latest so that I don't hold up the milking. These girls are milked three times a day and they need to stick to that as closely as they possibly can so that it doesn't upset the cow's routine. I get asked a lot if I disinfect before another farm and the answer is yes, almost always. Um, where, where it allows, I use hypochloric acid. If we get the state mate, I couldn't just wash this off and go to another place, could I? So 
once I've got all the loose stuff off, I use this little sprayer, which is full of hypo or hypochloric acid, neat. And I spray it on and that will disinfect it and really, really get the muck off. And if we just leave it a few seconds, you'll see all that slurry will actually start to turn white and that's when it's softened and all the bacteria is being killed and it washes off so easily it's unreal. When you gloves and knives are exactly the same, they get the fairy liquid treatment. The main thing is I abdicate everybody being as clean as possible to cut down on dermatitis. So how can I do that if I'm dirty? So here on this farm they actually have the second best feet out of all of the farms that their vet practice visits. But that hasn't stopped Adrian from still looking for more places which they could be doing better to further reduce the lameness within their cattle. Into locking can max. That's half the problem going to fit on some fishing. See how even, uneven it is. Adrian's talking about how to reduce white line problems in cows and he thinks these slats are causing problems because the cows turn on them. And he's right. The rest can feel good. So a lot of people won't actually realise that milking cows and cows which aren't milking actually are on different rations. As you can clearly see here, these cows are milking so they've got a really protein rich and really really high energy diet. Whereas the cows which aren't milking or are dry and duty calve within the next few weeks aren't in quite as rich a diet. It's still tasty and they still love it, but it's just not quite as rich and it's not full of as much energy as the other stuff is. These are called calf hutches or igloos and calves love them because, especially these ones because they're bigger so they can get a couple in there and cows, as I've told you before, are really social creatures so they really like being with other cows or other calves in this case. See how clean they are and healthy, nice pink noses. It's important that calves and cows aren't completely in a, an environment where the air isn't moving, otherwise they can get things like pneumonia and all sorts of things like that. So fresh air is vital for them and that's why there's actually holes in the back of this igloo and a nice pen for them to be out the front of. Hey cubbies. Hey. Yo. I've got to be honest, I've got a proper soft spot for calves. I think they're class. This is the nursery, this is where, on this farm anyway, they look after the calves and they're usually grouped in age. The ones in the smaller pens are usually younger and then as they get older they go into larger pens and bigger groups of calves. And again, look how clean it is, it's nice and clean, fresh bed and all the time in here. These guys are having some cake or some meal or whatever, as well as formula milk. Ugh. Their tongues feel like sandpaper. And you can see actually in this shed that I always say actually, don't I? I say that all the time. When I'm watching these videos back, I go, actually, oh, actually. And you can actually see, oh, does it do your head in as much as it does my head in? But what you can see here is they've put those bales, those large square bales there. So that if it is slightly colder, the calves can cuddle in behind them and keep nice and warm. And you'll actually see the calves grouping to work together to share body heat. This is actually colostrum. Col I said actually again, didn't I? Colostrum is the first milk from a few from the first few days after a cow's calf basically and it's full and full of antibodies and all sorts of things which really protect the calves from disease and really really get them off to a good start. So what they do is they keep this milk to the side and they feed it to the newborn calves. What's the key to keeping these nice and healthy then? Come on, give us your wisdom. Good stockmanship. Good stockmanship. So this is Richard and he is in charge of looking after these calves from being born all the way through to maturity. Richard was explaining to me that they actually keep these calves in single hutches when they're first born for just over a week to ensure that they get off to the best possible start that they can and that you can really keep a close eye on them to make sure that they don't contract any diseases or anything like that and that their health isn't compromised in any way whatsoever. So you can see the progression here, these are the youngest guys and they're moving up in size until the older ones up there and then they obviously go away to some other shed which to be honest I'm not sure where that is but they obviously get moved into a larger group into slightly different conditions and they get fed different types of food. 
And here are those larger calves that I was just talking about. So again, they're in pens, but they're more open to the elements. They're fed cake here. They're not fed milk at all now. And there's straw there for them to eat as well to really fill up their bellies. It's so important for calves, especially at this age, to be kept in dry conditions because if they're kept in waterlogged or dirty conditions, then their feet will be really susceptible to disease and foul in the foot. And you're never ever going to get strong cows from a calf or a stark, a stark's an older calf, that has had foot problems in the past. So he's actually just going to bed them up with this straw and what they do is they chop it and they fire it in so that it's really fine and really really soaks up all the urine or moisture or slurry or whatever there is there. done for another day thank you very very much for watching hope you've enjoyed today's video and i'll see you again soon
make me feel so unreal. You make me feel so unreal.